Good morning, it's Sunday and welcome to Sabah's way of life. So today is, was, is a garden day, um, but unfortunately it's raining. So now when it rains, it doesn't mean that I don't do anything in the garden. I mean, on the contrary, um, I will go in the garden. It just means that I can't work with the earth. It's not a good idea to work with the earth. Several reasons. Number one, the ground will be far too wet, so I'm not going to be seeding, growing, digging. It's just going to create a mulch. And secondly, also, um, from a lunar perspective, it's, a, it's not a good time to grow anything. We have the new moon tomorrow, and the cosmic forces of the new moon um, do not lend themselves well to planting, doing any... any um, any significant work with plants in the garden so I won't be sowing or or transplanting plants but there's a lot of hard landscaping work that I can do and I did some of that yesterday and I'm going to do some more today so I just want to switch this around because it's so lush and green when it rains it's beautiful so I'm not taking the phone out because it'll get wet, but you can see how green it is. Well, hopefully you can. I'm not sure what the light is like. There's no sun. But over here, you can see where I planted those garlic in pots. What I did this morning early when I took the hens out, I put a load of straw on top of the pots to protect the garlic roots from rotting. One of the things that I read, and I shared it with you in that particular video, um, is to protect the roots. So I could have actually taken the pots and put them into the greenhouse, but instead I've just put straw on top, and hopefully that'll work. And what I might also do later is drag those pots to underneath the trees at the back of the garden. Now, I'm explaining this to you because it's, it's a question of you're always engaging your mind with what's happening in your garden and processes rather than thinking, um, wh wh what do I need to do next? Where do I read that bit of information? What does that book say? Or how does she do it or he do it? I'm thinking for myself. I remember reading about the garlic and the roots getting too wet, it's raining, so let me put straw on top or move those pots, because they're in pots, I can move them, move them to underneath the tree where they won't get wet. And then when it's sunny again, bring them out. And on the sub subject of pots, that, um, that actual activity of moving them is also moving your body. And this is where you're really, as, we, as I mentioned yesterday in the video, where really you're building muscle because you're out in nature. Yesterday, one of the things I did in the garden was to actually drag. So I, I these really big pots, I'll show at the back of the garden. You see that big terracotta pot there with the green um, tray sitting on top? So I had um, another three or four similar to that, three black ones and another one. And I literally what down held my core in and I dragged them across the lawn and uh, wash them with the hose pipe brush them down this is all building your muscle and energy this is the stuff you should do if you can rather than choose to go to the gym far far more significant powerful and you're getting something important done and I put them out the front and really that really wore me out when I woke up this morning I could really feel it in my core muscles and even in my back just be careful to support your back make sure that you're you're bent down and you're 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 not using your back muscles but you're using your core muscles or your leg muscles to do that it's all um, common sense so um, yes that's really what I'm doing in the garden the other thing is it's a good time to observe so just stand and now and I, I'm observing everything I can see over here on the peach tree which I pruned very hard just two weeks ago that you can see it's blossoming already which is beautiful my um, plum tree at the back which you can just about see is already blossoming the apple trees aren't just yet take the time to um, observe the other thing I'm doing today and let me just shut the door to keep the heat in because it's quite cold the other thing I'm going to do today is bake bread I was with my mother this morning we were having breakfast and she was talking to me about what she's going to be doing in the kitchen everything's about food for my mother 
She's cooked every day of her life, so food is part of her way of life, and it should be ours too. So she's going to be making some steak pies, um, and just that interaction with her, uh, discussing would she like some kidneys? I've got some kidneys in my freezer for a steak and kidney pie. Does she have the right size um, pie dish? Can I share a pie dish with her that would help? So these conversations were very meaningful and meaningful to her. And um, I said to her that I'm baking bread today, which I am, and I'll bake a couple of extra loaves. So one can go in the freezer, one to my parents, and uh, one will be here, which um, I will use sparingly. So today I'm going to be baking a milk bread, and um, I want to share this recipe with you, which I'm going to share below, because I did get it off YouTube, but it's from a YouTube channel where you may have seen them where for a beginner it's very easy because visually they show you how to bake that bread and the idea behind it is that you get used to cooking your own food and baking your own bread. Remember when you do it with your own hands and you put your own energy into it the effect that that bread will have on your body and the cells of your body and that of your family is completely night and day difference to the bread you would buy at the supermarket. And I can um, say to you that I have not bought bread from the supermarket for, it must be a year. The only exception to that is when I have rarely bought a very good quality sourdough. But I bake my own bread. My mother bakes her own bread. You can buy bread flour if you, you can buy um, quality bread flour from the supermarket. But what I do is I buy a good quality Canadian white bread flour from a mill up north. I think it's Shipton Mills and I'm not suggesting they're the best, but I buy it from there. I've also recently, last year, I travelled to um, Scotland and they've got one of the oldest flour mills there. I cannot remember the name. I'll put it in the notes later today or tomorrow. Um, and I bought some flour from there, um, loaded it into my camper van and I drove it back home. And I also got that flour. I also had a tour around the mill and... Um, really got a clear understanding of how they grow their flour. It's completely organic, beautiful on the land. And Scotland is well known for its quality um, baking bread flour. Um, so that, that's what I'm doing today. Tomorrow is going to be quite a special talk because it's the first day of Ramadan and I'm going to be fasting for five days. I have prescribed the number of days that I'm going to fast five and I'm going to explain why I'm saying this to you in tomorrow's video rather than discuss it now but for now have a lovely Sunday if you're in the UK and it's raining get cooking there's a lot you can do you can cook or you can go out in the garden and do jobs um, that are going to engage your brain and your muscles and your body and you'll feel really good afterwards have a nice day